do you know that? How did you know? How do you know this? How the hell did you know this? Is Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter ways. And 19 seasons in, Hot Ones is a YouTube phenomenon that has transcended the platform to become the internet's favorite interview show. Look at us. Today, it's awards, A-listers, and an Android interviewer. But it was once just a niche internet show. It's a fascinating journey. So how did Hot Ones achieve it all? Hey, I have this idea for a show where we interview celebrities but eat violently hot chicken wings. Mm. First We Feast is a blog and YouTube channel about food, food, and more food. An off-branch of complex media, two employees of First We Feast are Chris Schoenberger and Sean Evans. And in 2015, the pair were looking for a way to merge a passion for grub with clickable faces. The channel needed more views, and celebrities can provide that. The problem was most celebrity interviews are repetitive, mundane, and extremely PR-driven. Everyone was sick of it, and if Chris and Sean wanted to stand out, they needed a unique selling point. You know, I have this idea. What if we were interviewing celebrities, which is such a tired format? How do we make them not boring or solve for that hot sauce? Chris Schoenberger had the recipe from day one. Chicken wings, hot sauce, and celebrities. They just needed to execute it. And I love the art of interview, but wouldn't be a good interviewer. Which is where Sean Evans stepped up. All right, let's get in a room Sounds and bang like this whole thing out, shoot a pilot and go. With Chris's vision and Sean's delivery, season one of Hot Ones already had the essence fans love today. By definition, celebrities live unreachable lifestyles, yet Hot Ones strived to level the playing field. This was a terrible interview. This disarming nature of the hot sauce combined with these uh, thoughtful career-spanning questions, a naturally humanizing experience, you know? Each wing is like peeling off a, a layer of who they are and then presenting sure. them in a completely different way. And knock them right out of that PR-driven flight path. As a viewer, it's a fascinating watch. The audience are not alone in that. This is such like a sweet, enlightening interview. I think this is my favorite uh, awesome. interview I've ever done in my life. And when the creator, guest, and audience are all having consistent fun, a reputation forms. What y'all got going here is genius. By season two of Hot Ones, Sean was already interviewing huge celebrities. And like a self-fulfilling prophecy, the bigger names they had, the bigger names they could get. A glowing approval was emerging amongst celebrity circles for Hot Ones. But maybe more prominently, Sean Evans. Sean Evans is widely known as one of the best interviewers on the planet. His versatile, comforting presence, combined with his exquisite research, sets him apart from the rest. Dude, it's an amazing mm. show. I find your research so impeccable. You are definitely known for your incredible interviews. You got great research and you're a great interviewer yourself. And the best part about it, 100% is you. Sean and the research team are known for putting in the work and constructing interviews that stand out. <laughs> It is what it looks like, it's just elbow grease. Dig in for what you can get. Sean recognizes that having influential guests come to the show is a privilege and works to make the whole experience memorable for all parties. You should meet them halfway on what's hopefully a, a thoughtful and considered interview. How do you know about that? How do you know about that? How the fuck did you know that? Yes, yeah, how do you know that? Did I tell you that? So what does it take to build an interview like this? Chris Schoenberger and I have written every run of show since we started Hot Ones. We just take advantage of as much time as we have. They scour socials, articles, biographies, and consume the content. No corners are cut. There's no way around it. To learn, you have to work. Sean does have quite a unique eye for potential questions, though. An edge that I have, I think, is the body language feel. Watching so many interviews, like in research, I'll look at body language. Maybe he's an empath, or maybe he has a knack for noticing things others don't. I can kind of see when they want to keep talking about to add something. To it, yeah. yeah, we do a good job of recognizing that and then being like, all right, well, how can we mastermind something around that that allows them to like let that thing out? So they're not afraid of the grunt work. Their priority is arriving prepared with questions they know the guests care about. That's the best question ever. That's a great question. That's a really interesting question. That's a great question. Nobody's ever asked me anything like that. Dude, although I hate you, I respect you. Thank you for knowing that. And once they found that winning formula, have they ever budged? Hot Ones has barely changed its format since its first episode. Sean and Chris knew they had something good and haven't turned back. It was just me and Chris and we could make this thing work on our terms. We like really stuck to what we wanted to do. And then now it's to a point where like nobody really, they can't really cross any lines. The pair are the orchestrators of Hot Ones and their belief in stability is a key reason for the show's longevity. I mean, down to the quotes. Careful around your eyes. 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 But it doesn't stop there. Take a look at the titles. There's a formula here that never changes. The guest's name, an eccentric verb, 
while eating spicy wings. Over and over. And the thumbnails, they're all identical. Just drag and drop a new face. Because what they've established says it all. They know it works, and their branding is recognizable instantly. The Hot Ones packaging is rock solid. We're not really clickbaiting or doing any of that bullshit. Like, we really think that we can create attention without those things. It's a really admirable trust in their content. And despite a growing viewership and budget, their set is consistently a simple black backdrop. With this just sort of stripped down budget set. This means they can take Hot Ones on the road. We can travel and do the show wherever. But Sean knows we're all human, and too much of the same thing can be torturous. Keeping the show fresh, in spite of its uniform structure, is critical. Because ultimately, I think that's the, the lifeblood of the show, is just having a different viewer experience every time. The viewer experience always takes on the personality of whoever's in that seat. And then when you bring in an array of personalities, then you have a different viewer experience every single time. Longevity is paramount for the guys at Hot Ones. They care about providing returnability. And one way they achieve that is by taking advantage of the medium. We have to talk about it. The Hot Ones editing is an extremely important, overlooked reason for its success. The like, edit is like one of the most amazing components thank of you. Hot Ones. Yeah, I appreciate it. We work so hard on that. In fact, I'd argue its editing style is almost as synonymous with Hot Ones as the wings. Editors Colin Higgins and Chris Murphy have established a style so prominent that guests are imagining it in real time. I need to like do an expression that you, I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't look crazy. This is also the part in the show where like, you guys do that thing to my voice where it's like <laughs> echoey and shit. Isn't that just crazy? The show has become self-aware. The editing breaks the fourth wall and becomes the room's third character. Those who've never seen an episode likely recognize this Paul Rudd moment. Hey, look at us. Or this version. Look at us, look at us. Huh? Look at us. Because Hot Ones works perfectly as a meme factory. A cough here. And look there, Deep dive under and whatever this is, Hot Ones transcends YouTube to go viral everywhere, which makes the show built for compilations. The recurring elements can be packaged neatly together and assembled as standalone products. Creators like Jasper Liang have assembled mega viral compilations. We know what we like about Hot Ones, and these videos offer a way of mass consuming it. Sean Evans and Chris Schoenberg have built Hot Ones from the ground, and now they have traditional media quaking in their boots. For just a YouTube show, Hot Ones brings in colossal audiences. I mean, let's face it, the chat show format got boring kind of quickly, with today's audiences just not resonating like they used to. This caused an upsurge in the anti-chat show, a quirky, absurdist take on the status quo that hopes to shake things up. But these are not approachable for all of us. Hot Ones, however, takes this modern surrealism while never straying too far into absurdity. This gives the show a very wide net to catch an audience. It's this accessibility that has caught the attention of mainstream media. Sean has been featured on TV numerous times, often even performing the Hot Ones dance. And whether you admit it, there's nothing we've done on The Late Late Show which even comes close to being as good as this. Or not. I don't want to do that wing show though. It's like not a good way to talk, man. If you're a show host, there's a lot to be jealous of. Hot Ones has become an undeniable powerhouse, but getting this far doesn't come without its hurdles. You're gonna get eyeballs, you know, and you're gonna compete for those, then I think your show has to be that exceptionally good. So many people are cult-like with Hot Ones, so you feel like you have to impress them. So to keep that going <laughs> on a longevity level, people's expectations only get higher. You become a victim of your own success now, where it's like, all right, you do this for a long time, now you have this audience expectation. They see something, and then they need to see something different, or see something mm -hmm. better, mm -hmm. otherwise it's gonna stay, and eventually it's gonna fall off. Sean, Chris, and the rest of the Hot Ones crew have established a winning formula. Millions of fans are eagerly anticipating their next step every single week. That's a lot of pressure. You know, one of the things that motivates me is sort of like a fear of embarrassment, a fear of humiliation. Millions of people are gonna see it, so I can't embarrass myself right. on a stage off. that big. But Sean uses this fear for good and pours himself into every interview. Besides, life was pretty different not long ago. You know, we didn't even have that high hopes of for the show, like just in general. It's not like we had huge dreams for it. We didn't really have any idea of what it was or what it would be. We thought we could be like a funny internet sideshow thing going on. Expectations were low. They were just testing the waters to see what would happen. And boy. Streamy for pop culture goes to... And the streamy goes to... It is an honor to present my friend... Hot one. Hot one. Sean C. Evans with the Webby for Best Web Host of the Year. Hot Ones has shattered the glass ceiling. 
and catapulted itself as one of the best interview shows of all time. 19 seasons, hundreds of episodes, and a perpetual belief in their content. You really have to believe in what you're doing because there is no immediate payoff. They only got where they are with immense patience and confidence. Confidence in their idea and confidence they were doing what they loved. It's a good interview though. The whole place is buzzing. Everything's going good and I do love everything about what I'm doing right now. And I love the show and I love the people I make the show with. And I can't imagine what my life would be like without it at this point. Sean Evans is the best fucking host. You're a damn good interviewer. You're like a really well-researched and like great interview. You take your job seriously. You don't have to care as much as you do. You do, you really do, it's really amazing. You're so great at this, dog. You're really good at this, bro. Dude, you're an impressive talent. I'm impressed by you. You are genuinely the best host because you are such a beautiful person, man. So Sean's not a robot. He's just a guy who loves his job and his passion for the show reveals itself in the finished product. It's truly a show made for the people, by the people. So take that risk. Believe in your idea and outwork your competition. Who knows what the future holds?